Welcome to Right on Track, a songwriting podcast. Thanks to Tone for tuning in. I'm Demi Michelle Schwartz, and I'm thrilled you're joining me on my songwriting journey. So kick back and relax, don't fall flat, and remember, stay right on track. everyone welcome back to right on track i am so excited because joining me today is tom carey hi tom hi how are you doing all right i'm doing fantastic how are you yeah no worries yeah no worries all good yeah all good fantastic well i'm so excited you're joining me today to chat all about inspiration in the great outdoors your upcoming single and more but before we get into this can you show the listeners a little about yourself and how you got started with songwriting Yes, certainly. Um, Well, uh, my name is Tom Carey and uh, I live in Cornwall, which is South UK, right down on the very, very tip on the toe of the UK, really. Um, And I got into songwriting and singing um, after taking up the guitar when I was about eight years old. Uh, I took up the guitar when I was eight and uh, I gave it up straight away because I couldn't. Um, figuring out the names of the strings was a bit tough for me at the time. So <laughs> I gave up and then my dad um, persisted and he said, no, I want you to try it. Uh, I see something here. Let's. I just want to just pay for a few more lessons, see what you think. And at the time I kind of sang and I did some singing and whatnot, um, but I didn't really sing with the guitar. Um, it was only when I was probably... 13 or so, 14, after playing the guitar for six years or so, where I actually then turned around and went, hang on a minute, (laughs) I can play guitar and sing. So I put the two together and then very, very quickly I started writing songs um, with the guitar. I had previously just been writing songs with, uh, with, with my own voice and and um, just singing melodies along and whatnot and all that all that stuff. Um, and yeah, so then when I was 13, 14, 15, took up songwriting with the guitar. Um, and then more recently, over recent years, I've kind of taken up a bit of piano. And that's helped my songwriting from a point of view of um, sitting down on a piano, being a musician is completely different um, sitting down on a guitar. So uh, you can do different voicings, different rhythms and everything. So um, it opens up a whole new world to your um, songwriting and um, a whole new element to stuff, which is really cool. So, yeah. And then, yeah, I went to college, uh, did music at college. And then I either was going to go down the route of uh, basically recording and session work as a guitarist, uh, or I was going to go down the route of performing live. And I thought, no, you know what? I'm not going to go to uni and do the, the recording and the the kind of reading of sheet music and the theory side of things. I want to go straight in front of people and sing. And so when I was about 18, um, well, 17, that's that's what I did. I just said, no, and that's exactly what I want to do and quit my job and then went out in the bars and busked for many, many, many years. And yeah, here I am today still not not busking at the moment. I haven't busked for um, quite a few years now, but um, um, yeah, I'm busking. I'm I'm playing a lot and playing a lot in in venues at festivals and and doing doing various things. So yeah, that's where I am today. That is fantastic. I really resonated when you were talking about piano because that's actually my main instrument. I started at age 10 and I, when I was in college, I also majored in music and I got an English degree as well. But I've definitely found too, for some reason, I would always write on guitar. I think it was just easier. It was in my room when I got inspired. I just grabbed it and started writing. But I've been writing on piano much more frequently and often like all the time now every time I get inspired I run to my piano and I completely agree it definitely opens up a whole new world um, because I know theory and I've been playing classical pieces for a very long time I can pull in some chords on piano that I don't even know how to play on guitar and so I think it definitely opens up a whole new world (laughs) yes yeah no I couldn't agree more I think yeah as you say the voicings and stuff that you can play on piano you just are simply not possible with the guitar because of the spacings and only having six strings so yeah. Um, yeah, totally agree. For sure. So I'm super excited to dive deeper into our chat for today. So can you kick things off with a quote by Maxim Lagake? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, this one I really, really love. Um, it really resonates with me personally, uh, as I love the nature and, and outdoors and I've got a quite close affinity to it. Um, 
So yeah, by discovering nature, you discover yourself. Why do you resonate with this so much? I, I really resonate with that. When it says by discovering nature, you discover yourself. I feel like that's kind of down living down here in Cornwall my whole life. Uh, I, I've realized that a big part of my life without even realizing it is it's just been the norm has been to be outside. It's been to be in the sea. It's to been um, in the woods, creating campfires, making dens, walking, hiking, running, surfing, um, cycling, um, doing all these sports. That I love doing gig rowing, um, rowing in the sea, in the open sea. And once you, kind of spend a lot of time in the, in in the sea in nature in the woods whatever i really do find like you have almost this is going to sound really cheesy but it's 100 percent true you almost kind of have a little sense of peace um and there's no real way to describe it other than i think the people who know know <laughs> if that makes sense um the people who who are lucky enough to live around those kinds of areas such as kind of near the coast or near a beautiful piece of woodland or countryside know that to you to live by the by the by the by uh, and and around the outdoors on a on a continual basis is something that gives you a sense of peace and i think that's that's that really resonates with me because i spend a lot of time in the outdoors and i take my guitar in the outdoors and do a lot of songwriting and i feel like there's a huge sense of peace that comes over me when i do so that is incredible. I have to confess, I'm not very an outdoorsy person. I love the beach. I don't live near a beach, but every time I can go to the beach, I love that. But I definitely love to be outside. I'm not very into like hiking or cycling or anything like that, but I just love being outside, especially like springtime, like hearing the birds chirping, feeling the air on my face, the wind, um, just the scent of grass and everything. It definitely gives you a sense of peace, but also just like calm, like you're just so calm and you're just with nature and you're just out there. Um, and especially at the beach, like hearing the waves and sand on your feet, feeling that and everything. Um, I definitely love to be outside. I don't write songwriting a whole lot outside, but with my other passion, creative writing, I do a lot of my novel writing outside, which is really oh, wow. interesting. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, with the winter months here, I can't be chilling out on the deck in the snow in December no. writing. <laughs> yeah. But um, but during like I think spring you'd be summer, for too long if that was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but during like spring, summer, and uh, early fall, I love it. So you mentioned how you take your guitar out and you write outside. Um, when you do that, are there certain places in nature you like to be? Is it just anywhere you can go? Or are there certain settings that you like to be immersed in while you're doing that? It's a really good question, actually. Um, it totally depends on the mood that I'm in, I feel. Um, if if I'm if I'm in the mood where I want to feel very at peace within myself, then I'll go somewhere where I know that or very if I want to be very inward and really get to something that's inside of me. Uh day, for instance, perfect example. Um, I didn't even leave the house. I actually was in the car and all of a sudden I had this brainwave of of a of a song idea and I got, it was, it was one of the first times this actually happened, really enough. And I got this song idea, and a, along with, which has never happened before, a video idea that to the same song and the whole emotional impact of the song and, and what the video would do to the song and, and the imagery and, and everything. And it resonated with the situation I'm in so much. It was just insane. And it was one of those moments, all I wanted to do was just go home, be on my own, uh, where there was no one else there and just write and then other times they'll which is and within four minutes i had the song done done signed still delivered i won't change it um maybe tweak a couple little bits here and there but got the foundations down and then other times there'll be times where i'll go you know what i want to i want to just write about nature i want to write about the, the the surf coming in so i'll go down to a beach where i know there'll be people and um I'll just space myself out around them and, and just, just write and watch the world go by, really. And then sometimes even in coffee shops as well. I'd sit in coffee shops and I would pad and 
um, pen in hand and and uh, and you can get some pretty cool ideas just doing a bit of people watching <laughs> and yeah. watching people go watching people go by the window all of yeah. a sudden you, you kind of go wow okay this is quite cool <laughs> and it opens your mind up a bit yeah no that's fantastic that was really interesting that was another question I wanted to bring up like while you're in nature and these different places do you actually pull on the sensory details that you're actually experiencing in your writing. You brought that up with writing about nature. So do those ideas find their way into a lot of your songs or is it more of like a way for you to immerse yourself in the creativity? Wow, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, really interesting question. I like that. The I would, I would probably say a bit of sitting back, especially if I was at the, at the sea, I would... I've I've always been inclined to write with something around me in mind, even as a metaphor. So the 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 crashing and the swirling of the of, of the waves, and the and the lapping of the the water on the shore and the sand and footprints in the sand and and campfires on the beach and all those kinds of things and the crackling of of of, of a fire as the moon comes up and the sun goes down and all that kind of those kind of kind of feelings and sensory things as you say like the, the crackling of 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 leaves of autumn leaves under your feet as you're walking through the woods with the twi uh, twigs like breaking underneath you uh, underneath your feet things like that kind of get people imagining they're there in the moment and and get them kind of get get the listener to kind of really um buy in to being that person in that moment of time in time and ultimately all we're doing as songwriters really is taking people away from their daily lives for just a moment, just a moment. We're taking them away and we're, we're, we're giving them an experience and we're letting people maybe reminisce, maybe feel better. Um, sometimes even to make people feel emotional um, in that time. And I think all the sensory kind of aspects of songwriting get, uh, allow people to latch on to, to, to the words you're saying and, and and really feel like they're in that moment with you and therefore when they feel in that moment with you they feel like they're feeling those same emotions so yeah i think writing in in, in the woods and outside and by the sea yeah amazing and i try and use those sensory things as much as possible sensory language and songs is one of my favorite things in the world sometimes when i get an idea for a song even if it's nature inspired or not i will just do total free writing for like 10 minutes and just dump a bunch of sensory language onto the page and draw on that for the inspiration whether that be a metaphor or more concrete and especially when you look at genres like country that are just so deep with storytelling and taking a listener to a different place and making them feel something you need those sensory details to both ground you in the song as you're writing it, but the listeners as they're listening. And my favorite songs are the ones that I can picture something. I can see what the character in the song is doing and I can experience with them. And I think when you draw on those sensory details that you're either witnessing as you're out in nature or just imagining in your mind, pulling those into your songs is absolutely fantastic. I think that's one of our strongest tools as songwriters. Yeah, I can I couldn't agree more. Um, there's a wonderful lady online, and I annoyingly I really forget her name, but she's she does a lot of lectures on songwriting, and um, she she was one of the ones that really made me kind of a few years ago realize um, consciously realize that I was actually um, doing these things without realizing, like as you say, making these sen uh, sens sensory language and and getting people to connect to it. Uh, I don't I don't think there's Honestly, I don't think there's much more that we can do. That that is probably one of the most powerful things, if not the, I would say, the most powerful thing in songwriting as a songwriter is to be able to get people to connect via sensory, sensory language, as you say. Um, right. And that's, yeah. For sure. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. Like, if you're reading a book, you 
are like experiencing the world through the point of view character and you're experiencing all of their senses and their feelings and I think that's why it's so cool like being a creative writer and a songwriter a lot of what I learned especially in my master's program with writing popular fiction setting and emotion and all those things songs are basically mini stories in a lot of ways they have their theme or big message but there's these sensory details and storytelling aspects of them some of my favorite songs that really dig deep into the sensory language are the ones that stick with me for a really long time because if you pull on their sensory language and like make a picture for your listeners and really immerse them then the emotional impact that they have with that song is something that will affect them after they finish listening it'll make them share it with other people and listen again so I think that's our greatest tool like you said um really letting people imagine and feel and be there with you absolutely yeah and I think a big thing is I think that's 100 percent is uh, the songs that really really stick with you are the ones that you you grab from an emotionally kind of sensory point of view because I think this the sense the sensory language kind of opens up the possibilities of uh, hugely to you then being emotionally affected by the song because you're then putting yourself as a listener in that point of view um, automatically which is which is quite a cool thing uh, and it's very very powerful thing um, but yeah yeah I find it very fascinating how the whole how language can be used in in songwriting to to not only get a message across but but also get people to really kind of open up their emotions and stop the doing maybe maybe even stop doing what they're doing on that on that in that moment in time and and um it's always it's always the imperfections that we fall in love with in songwriting and i love that it's it's never the perfections in songwriting it's all the imperfections and uh, and I love that. It's all the crackles, the hisses and pops, and and uh, and the and the crackles of the voice that, like, and and the crunches and the yeah. I I love I love all that and that coupled together with the sensory language. I think you don't get much much better than that. You took this in a very great place because I think that when we are listening to songs we want to connect with them and if they're perfect and they paint this picture perfect thing this life this situation and everything about it's polished you want your songs to be polished and good but there's a difference between being human and being so perfect where it's just like wow that was really flashy but i can't connect and i think flaw is like especially looking at all of us like we're all human we all have flaws we all deal with emotion differently. We all have different perspectives on things. And when songs are able to make us either question something or change our mind or make us feel something, see something through someone else's eyes, you do that through being raw and authentic. And that does not mean perfection at all. Absolutely. Yeah. The yeah, there's an element of songwriting where you, you can, yeah, I totally 100% agree. If you, if it, if it's too polished, if it's too perfect, uh, I I I personally don't um, react and not react. I don't. Um, I'm not able to connect with it. Um, but yeah, it's it's all those imperfections. And weirdly enough, actually, that's a really good point because we as humans, we we fall in love with the imperfections, but also what makes us human is our imperfections so we're basically falling in love with the thing that is makes us human and so that's that's kind of bizarre as well and i've just thought of that then and that's kind of a a bizarre thing to think about yeah yeah Yeah, Yeah. for sure awesome so now i want to talk about your songwriting process so because you're so focused on being in nature and the sensory language do you typically start with your lyrics or do you sometimes write the melody first or do them simultaneously? It's, it changes. Uh, some, so, so it changes from, for me anyway. I, when I was young, really young, before I, before I played guitar, I had the element of songwriting with just words. So I would jot down words on a piece of paper and, and almost simultaneously come up with the, with the, with the melody of the lyrics and not really know what the the cause underneath we're going to do because I had no idea about music so and I didn't know how it worked but but now it it's kind of bizarre because 
it's it just totally depends on for me anyway on what not only what mood i'm in but what the song's about um for a perfect example today i've written this song in my head um the the idea of this song and as soon as i got to a stationary spot i pulled over put it all in my phone as notes and within about one minute i had the whole song lyrics done it just came to me in a flash and i had no idea anything about the melody the tempo the chord structure or anything and then i came home and for some reason the root note and the third uh um on my guitar's tuned down half a step so um it's it's down to e flat and d sharp and it's uh, i don't use do do that very often but i kind of just went to the g bass note and 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 the and the major third and just used that as a kind of like an alternating bass note and, and top note and with finger style and, and moved it up to the fourth back down up to the fifth and then sixth fifth fourth first again and kind of then thought right that's that's got to be it that's this is nice subtle underlying kind of alternating bass notes that are just subtle enough to let the words do the talking but 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 sit and kind of just be the be a subtle foundation for the the words because the words to me for that in that moment were very relevant to or are very relevant to what the situation I'm in with my life. So as we speak, so I wanted the, the, the music to be really simple. So the words came really quick and then I just sat down with the guitar and the first thing that came to my head, just the first thing that came to my fingers really just worked. And it's weird because that's not always the case. Yeah. I always think as well, if you struggle, if you're struggling to write a song nine times out of 10, not always, but I would say 99 times out of a hundred, if you're really struggling to write a song, put it down, walk away, move on. Because if something's good, it's going to come out or sleep on it and see if anything comes up the next day. Um, but, it, but nine times out of 10, all the, all the best songs I've ever had been part of, or in my experience have come pretty quick and they've come very naturally, almost like it sounds really cheesy to say it, but almost like, we as songwriters are just simply messengers. I know it sounds weird to oh, say. Oh, no, I I'm agree with so... this. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, yeah. I almost like someone else, somewhere else, yeah. something else is say is 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 pointing at us and going, you're the vessel in which I'm going to let the world know this. Right. Um, in this way. And bleh, and you just, you just explode with these lyrics and these chords and these things. And I just think when that happens, that's, that's what songwriting is all about. It's all very well sitting in a studio for two or three hours and writing a song with a formula and a commercial viability formula and, and going, right, we need a 20 second intro. And then it needs to be in this key so everyone can sing it. And then it needs to go up this to that. And this, yeah. that, and that's perfect. But actually the ones that are naturally and spontaneous, that have a nice, easy to sing along a ball line and a relatable, um, a relatable message. I think are, are the ones that really, really stick and are powerful. I think simple's usually better with songwriting. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. I love that, and I like the idea of kind of being drawn in by something that inspires you and speaks to you, a concept that is authentic to you. I preach authenticity left and right. Like if you're writing about something that you don't personally connect with, it's not going to come natural. Um, and I think like, like you said, like if something's not working, just set it aside because there's always more songs to be written. Like that song didn't come together for a reason, but that means that you'll be able to write another one. And I fully believe in like, just there's something weird going on with like the songwriting thing like inspiration is this mysterious thing um just the other day I'm currently co-writing with a newer artist and she told me an idea for a song we had just a free writing like I wanted to get into the headspace of what she wanted to do with this song so we just chatted for about an hour we weren't trying to write the song I was just getting to know her and her story with this song so I wake up the next day with a whole chorus, like melody, lyrics, everything. And I woke up with this in my head. I was like, I wasn't even thinking about this. And I, I sent it to her and she was like, 
oh my god that's it that's that's the chorus i'm like i wasn't even trying i was sleeping that's mental, isn't it? <laughs> it's just crazy it's that's almost crazy. like there's a subconscious thing going on like when we're not actually writing our brains are kind of doing it for us <laughs> absolutely and i know i I'm, i i love sleep science myself and i know <laughs> yeah. i know that as i'm really fast passionate about yeah. sleep science and, and why we sleep and what happens when we sleep and one of the things that we happen when we sleep is that it makes sense of things during the day uh so then basically it, it straightens out all the crossed wires in the day and nine times out of ten if you're struggling with something put it to, try and work on it just before you go to sleep and wake up in the morning and your brain does the work and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so weird. Like, that wasn't even the first time that happened. Like, multiple times, I'll wake up at, like, 2 in the morning, had some kind of crazy dream, and then had a song. And I'm like, to me, you got to get up and get out of bed and write this down. Because if you don't do this, you're going to be so mad at yourself tomorrow morning when you can't remember it. That is, I think, as songwriting, as songwriters, that is the dreaded, It's a dreaded curse. <laughs> when you get that and you just, I had it literally was it yesterday or the day before I was writing a song and I went no I'm just going to keep working on this and I went oh no I, <laughs> oh my I've forgotten that ah and I was just like no what have I done Tom get your voice notes out what did you do yeah um yeah yeah oh my gosh <sighs> wow that is the dreaded thing when you when you're songwriting and all of a sudden that wave of inspiration kind of it doesn't go but you just forget that little line that you've been working on you just go oh that was so tasty and boom it's just gone disappears. Yeah. oh wow but no that i know what you, you you touched on something a minute ago which is really interesting you said about inspiration you said about how um it, it's it's a very mysterious thing and i find that that's 100% true and i find that very bizarre it's one of those things that isn't really researched and no one really knows where do we get inspiration? What well, What is inspiration? What is the motivation and the inspiration to write a song? And where does that come from? It's a very bizarre thing. Yeah. The way I've grown to think about it is that inspiration is different for everybody, right? Something that might inspire you won't even catch my attention. It might perk someone's ears up, but not really grab their attention. And I think it's like, first of all, it's a mysterious thing. I have no idea where it comes from. But I think a part of it may be just your your whole being, like your experiences, your memories, you, your personality, who you are as a person, everything that makes you you. There's going to be things in your life and through the way that you personally see the world that jump out at you. And it's like that thing where like people say if 50 people walk into a room that's like pretty... Um, <clears throat> complex room or whatever all 50 people will probably fixate on something different and it's just because of who they are and their background and so I think inspiration in a way is really similar but it's also interesting because I can be in a situation that was very inspiring and the next time I'm in that exact same situation it's not inspiring so it's a mix of I have no idea where this comes from and a little bit of who you are as a person yeah, totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. It's definitely, as you say, I love the idea of that as well, is that one person will look at uh, a, a, a moment, a song, a word, a phrase, a feeling, and it might absolutely send the hairs up on their arms and it just send them into to some emotional whirlwind. And it might not even make another person blink. And I love I love that. It's That's, that's life, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Mysterious, mysterious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Getting yeah. quite deep now. Aren't yeah, you? it is. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's also get deeper because your new single has a very emotional message to it. Um, so can you share with the listeners the inspiration behind I Can't Breathe? Yes, I can. Yeah, it's actually a song I wrote a while ago. And I had a different version of it recorded. It was called I Can't Breathe. And I was in the studio and basically the song is all about the emotion behind not only the feeling of someone taking your breath away, literally. Um, and when they hold you, that feeling of kind of literally taking your breath away. But also that feeling when that same person turns around and says... I can't do this anymore. And that is, it's weird because it's, 
it both are opposites, but they both take your breath away, uh, which is a bizarre thing. And th there's similar feelings, which is bizarre. One's sad and one's happy, and we associate them with each. But physiologically, they're kind of the same feeling, um, that kind of feeling in the tummy of butterflies and almost like that excitement slash nervous energy. This feeling of feeling nervous and feeling excited is exactly the same things, but we associate them with different experiences. And so this is the song is all about not being able to uh, feeling that kind of breathlessness of someone taking your breath away in a good way and unfortunately in a bad way. Um, and I actually wrote the song um, and I got it recorded in the studio locally. We spent two weeks, um, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of musicians came into the studio over two weeks. And we had a track which was fully produced, very commercial. And they played it back on the final day once it had come back from mastering. So you can imagine, you know, your, from your experience, the process into that is fairly in-depth. Um and I came back and I played it through the speakers in the studio and I turned around to Gareth, the producer, and said, I don't like it. And he was like, he was like, what? He, <laughs> he said, no, 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 don't do this, Tom. Don't do this. Don't do it. Because I've had, I've had it before with one other song when I got so far down the line and I thought to myself, this song has actually lost its message. Yeah. It's lost its message. So then and there, we had the pianist and I had the guitar and I said, Tom, the, the other pianist is called Tom as well. Tom as well. <laughs> and um, I said, right, let's press record. Let's just go. Let's just play. I said, I want a nice ethereal kind of atmospheric sounding drop, uh, neck pickup, fender clean, a little bit of reverby kind of sound on the guitar. Um, and we'll drop it down. We won't make it so high in the original key. It was C major. And I was like, no, let's go. Weirdly enough, I was like, let's go for A sharp major. <laughs> I was like, yeah, like, because it'll be flat, because that makes sense. Um, <laughs> and the pianist kind of looks at me pulling his hair out, going, why did you, why, can you just drop it down on steady tone? And I'm like, nope, <laughs> I like it here. And so oh we literally just press record. And I was like, you know what, that that is it. And we all, literally, he pressed record. And I went, this is a thing. He said, yeah, 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 I know the song. I was like, right, let's slow it down. Let's chill it out. And let's really screw the metronome, screw everything, throw the rule book out the window. And the first take we did, we finished. And I, I, I let the guitar ring. And it was one of those where we just let everything ring because we knew it was the take. And it was after two weeks of editing the hell out of what we had had. I just turned around and said, that's it. We need to add pedal steel on top of that because I love the sound of pedal steel. It just makes my heart melt. Um, and then I went straight into the studio and recorded the vocals um, literally in one take. I went, done. And that's it. That's exactly that's exactly the feeling I, I want to get. And, uh, and that was it. And that was one take music, one take vocals, which is the first time in my life that's ever happened. And... And I was just like, yeah, you know what? It, it makes me uncomfortable because it's very raw. It's very atmospheric. It's very stripped back and all my other stuff is quite full bodied with, with stuff going on. And, and it's, it's taken a lot of time to create. And, <laughs> and this was very, very quick. And so, yeah, it's totally different. It goes against the grain of what I've done before. Um, and it's one take, but it was right for the song because the song didn't need all the other stuff. It just needed total strip back. Yeah. So yeah, that's what that's wow. what it is. That is such a beautiful story. You definitely did what the song needed. And I love how you recognized that and you didn't settle with the original version. Like you as a writer, you know your intent. You know what you want. And so I absolutely love that. And the fact that you were like, let's just try this like let's just throw everything out the window and let's try this and the one take thing like that's phenomenal I've never done vocals in one take like that but very recently I was at the studio working on a song on my new EP that's coming later this year um the song is called halfway out of this town and it's a really emotional song um and I played piano on it and I went into um, what the piano was and it was all ready to go and I sat down and I usually like get very anxious even though piano is my main instrument I get very anxious um, and my producer's like you ready I'm like yep 
I did it. Like, it was one of those things. I don't know if you felt this way when you did the vocals. Do you ever feel or, like, did you feel like when you started, you kind of didn't remember, like, actually doing it? You just started and then just knew you were done? Yes. That is exactly how I felt when I did this song. And I, I finished it. And it was one of those things where, like, when I got to the end, I, like, to me, don't move your foot on the pedal and mess this up. Like, just let it, like, go out. And then when it was done, it was the silence. Like, my producer and I, like, no one said anything. And he was like, I I think that was it. And I'm like, wait, what? Can you play it back? And I was literally, like, in tears, just, like, sitting in there. Like, it was that thing. I didn't even realize what I did. And it, it's those moments in the studio where, you know, you have something magical. Yes, I probably could have done it a million times. Maybe the one like rolled chord was imperfect in time but that's what we were talking about earlier with the imperfection it's, it's an emotional song it shouldn't be perfect Absolutely. you know yeah I, yeah yeah that's exactly it and those those little quirks and those little nuances and 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 imperfections are what people connect to yeah wow they really are yeah. so congrats on the song cannot wait for everybody to hear it i heard it thanks to rachel um, <laughs> it's amazing uh, but yeah oh, everyone listening you. yeah you're welcome um, everyone listening definitely check it out um, so Tom before we go I have one more question for you to wrap things up with the nature side of things for any songwriters listening who maybe aren't very outdoorsy types or don't really or haven't ever tried to write in nature what advice would you give them try it um it's very simple uh but i would just say to them just try it just give it a go uh you will not look back find yourself a quiet spot i i would recommend just literally taking taking a guitar if the guitar is your instrument um or just simply taking a notepad and your phone so you can do some voice notes and just as you you said earlier on just free write for a little bit let your hand get out what your brain is full of uh, without you consciously thinking of it just write whatever comes to your mind and then glance over it afterwards and go yeah you know what let's just write about this or whatever but yeah just just try it just take a blanket sit out in nature um and just just try it it's it's something quite beautiful listening to the birds whistling uh listening to the uh, to the kind of the, the wind um whirling around and and the trees doing their thing and it's it's quite an incredibly uh, peaceful feeling and if a song a songwriters are out there who haven't written in the in the out, in the outdoors do it do it just once and you'll know exactly what i mean awesome tom thank you so much for joining me this has been an incredible conversation can you share with the listeners where they can find you on social media and listen to your music Yes, sure. No, thank you very much for having me, uh, Demi. It's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, my song, I Can't Breathe, is available now on iTunes for pre-order. So that's iTunes for pre-order and pre-save on Spotify. And if you can find the links to those, which are really simple, actually, the links, uh, you just click on it and then click which you want to pre-save or pre-order. Uh, you can go to my socials, which on Facebook is at Tom Carey Music, and that's C-A-R-Y, Tom Carey Music. And on Instagram, it's Tom Carey underscore official. And they're the main two that I use. So, yeah, it'd be great to hear from anyone out there, aspiring songwriters, singers. And, um, yeah, if you ever want any tips for songwriting in nature, then 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 hook me up with a, with a message, and, uh, and I'll give you my best shot. But, um, yeah, give it a go. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the new single, I Can't Breathe. Fabulous. Tom, thank you again for joining me. Listeners, thank you for listening to this incredible conversation with Tom Carey. And of course, until next time, stay, stay right, right on track. track.